Hi there, in this video we're going to take regular old footage like this, send it to After Effects and make it look like, oh, this with a kind of a camera move. Mainly we are exploring uh, how we get from Premiere Pro, send a regular bit of footage into it, kind of the pros and cons and tips and tricks and round tripping from After Effects back into Premiere Pro and in this case we're going to do this After Effects camera trick. Slow movie pan dolly thing, oh, look at that. All right, let's jump in and actually do it. Okay, let's bring it in. So let's go file import. Okay, I've got a uh, normal old, where is it called? It's called microinteractions.mp4. Okay, so bring in that. And um, what we'll do is we'll fit it into our sequence somewhere. Okay, uh, I realize this uh, particular video isn't particularly in theme with my co-working <laughs> thing, but hey, we're just gonna jam it in here because we're in the After Effects bit. Uh, so I'm going to add this video to it, hold down my command key, okay, on a Mac, control key on a PC. So it is part of that. It's too big at the moment, so I'm going to right click it and say set to frame size. So it fits in there, it's now HD instead of 4K. Okay, so it's in here now. What I want to do is add that cool camera effect you saw at the beginning. So that's something After Effects does. Okay, it has separate cameras, and you can fake cameras, and you can do amazing things in After Effects. Okay, so um, what you do is, if you want to send this to After Effects, you can obviously import it into After Effects directly, okay, and then bring it in later on, but it's easy to get it in position, get it the right size, okay, which is HD, right click it, and then you can just say replace this with an After Effects composition. Uh, what will happen? After Effects will open. It'll ask you to save your brand new, so it's going to create a new After Effects file for you. It's going to say save it, and I'm going to say cool, I'm going to put it in my exercise files with everything else and co-working, and this one's going to be called uh, micro interactions, interactions, um, screen move. Um, I like adding those little screen moves to kind of, I don't know, to sex them up a little bit, it's a little bit boring. So to add that camera movement, again this is not an After Effects course, if you want to, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of After Effects courses to check out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure, I can't help myself doing a mini tutorial in here, make sure you can see this little cube here. Uh, we're going to layer, new, add a camera. We're going to leave it all by default. Click OK. That little reminder says don't forget to tick that box on your little MP4. So that got imported from After Effects. Let's have a little look at what's going on in Premiere Pro. Back here in Premiere Pro, it looks the same. You can see it's got a pink color because it's an After Effects um, composition. You can see over here it is, what's it called now? 90 Replace After Effects. <laughs> it's got a bad name for hover above it. It's kind of using my file name from up here. Ignore the 90. It's how I keep track of these tutorials while I'm doing them. Um, but it does say in that little link there, it says micro interactions screen move dot AEP. Let's see if it's over here. Micro interactions, there it is. Where that's not connected in there. Do I know why? I don't know why. That's it there. Let's use my file name and the actual long version of it. So there it is. Okay, so it's in here and it's using that dynamic link. So it means when I make changes over here, so I've got my camera, it can be seen by the camera. At the beginning here, I'm gonna say, actually let's Go to transform, I'm gonna set my point of interest and position keyframes. I'm gonna grab my orbit tool and I'm gonna kind of just adjust this a little bit. I want this like slow movie pan thing. I want to adjust um, the pan just so I can do it there. I wanna zoom in a little bit. There we go. There's a lot of toggling between those. There are shortcuts between those tools, but I want the I want this kind of angle and I want it to kind of slide across. So at the end here, maybe not right at the end. Somewhere around here, my orbit tool again. I just want to kind of like change it. Here we go. So that it kind of does this like slow move. It's not as slow as I hoped. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea, right? I'm trying to make it look like I'm filming my screen when I'm not. Okay, so I've done this. Let's check in Premiere Pro what's happening. And you can see dynamic updating. Woohoo. I'm on full resolution. And it's, my computer's, the fans are on making a racket, um, but yeah, it's a bit jumpy. So when you are doing lots of updates and you wanna check how it fits in like over here and with all of this, and so you need to probably just move it down to a quarter or an eighth if you're working in 4K. 
There you go. So it's lower, but it's playing back a nice enough speed. So if I want to preview this and you know better, I can use my in and out points. Okay, hit my enter key and render the in and out. You can see it's a bit time consuming, so it's better just to lower the resolution. But at least now I can play it back and see the full resolution. Do you notice even if it's on one quarter, it's paying back lovely because it can. It's like, well, I can, so I will, even though you've said be a quarter. So let's, uh, the one thing to note though is if I do make a change, so I go into here and I'm like, okay, go to this end part. And what I want to do is get it to zoom right in. So I'm going to grab my zoom and I'm going to say, get it to like do this whole transition where it just kind of like pixelates and goes right in. Oh, go into the sun. Let's do it. I feel like there's some sort of, I don't know, deep meaning to this, <laughs> to the sun. Uh, you'll notice that over here, you see the red, it's, the green bit's gone, now it's red, so you have to re-render again. So that's a little bit annoying, so it's up to you how you want to do this, but it's cool that it dynamically links. And watch this last little zoom. Whoosh. Ah, oh, what a transition. Sunlight to coffee, I feel like there's something in there. All right, uh, and then you get to a point where... Uh, you know, you're like, actually, I like that now, and I'm going to move it around, and it's I'm not going to change it. You might go to the right click and say render and replace. Now, for me, often render and replace, I do more. Uh, oh, file importer detected inconsistent. Oh. So if you get an error like that and it goes away too fast, you can ignore it <laughs> and just go about your work and hope it doesn't come back. Let's click on this and let's have a look. Uh, inconsistent file. Mm, I'm fine. Something wrong with the metadata. I don't need the metadata. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> I'm going into the ignore pile. Uh, it doesn't seem very critical. And is it playing? Let's go back to full. Playing just fine. <laughs> ignore that. Uh, anything else I want to share with you? What was I showing you there? I got distracted. Um, so yeah, rendered in place. Oh. Uh, I normally only use the render and replace when it's like intros, reusable stuff that I'm going to use in different projects and over again. And uh, because this might change, I might get you know comments back and I'm not going to move it and reuse it. It's just going in this one document once. I'll just turn it down to a quarter and just use my render in and out effects when I need to test it. And one last thing you can do uh, is, especially with After Effects, is with it selected, you can go Command E or control E on a PC. That's a generic, you know, um, thing to say, open the original. So if I click on this and go command E, it'll open up the file in After Effects. Oh, no, because I've rendered and replaced it. That's interesting. Because I rendered and replaced it with the MOV. Okay, it's opened up in QuickTime in my case. It'll open up different on your computer. So if I get rid of that render and replace, and I have it selected and I go command E, it'll open up in After Effects. Nice. All right, uh, Command E works on lots of things, but it depends on like if you've got a Photoshop document, okay, I don't have one. If you have it selected here, have a PSD, it will open up in uh, Photoshop. If you hit Command E on a Mac, Control E on a PC, what have we got? Ooh, is it? Not that. Ooh, is that logo uh, for import? All right, one last thing I'll show you and we'll go. There was uh, Tourism Island, remember we had the graphics, we had this thing. Okay, if you've got that, it's Adobe Illustrator file with it selected, Command E, Control E on a PC. Instead of trying to work out what, you know, what created it and open up Illustrator and then find it on the finder and load it in, you just hit Command E, it'll open up in the original creator file. And you don't want to see me open up Illustrator. So we'll end the video here. Um, so replacing stuff with After Effects compositions. Okay, you just right click it and say, uh, replace with After Effects and do your After Effects business, it will connect it nicely for you. All right, Island awaits you in the next video at least.